Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer and in today's tutorial we will be starting this very beautiful elegant Christmas felt stocking and this is made by Busilla and I am making this for a family member. I'm going to show you the contents of the kit and already I am loving the colors of this kit. I know that um, Busilla has several kits in this color scheme and I really want to make more of these <laughs> just by looking at it I'm, I'm excited to make this so this is kind of like a father Christmas theme and here's all the felt that it comes with it's actually uh, not very many colors because you know the, the elegant theme is very uh, simple which is which is another draw that I love about it and here are all of the instructions that it comes with it and it looks fairly simple to put together actually there's not a lot of instructions which is always good so if you're like brand new to making these kits I would recommend checking out one of these elegant Busilla stocking kits and it comes with a nice chart and a big picture and an alphabet up here and it gives you a good visual of everything that goes on here so there's the instructions and then um, it comes with this pack of thread and stuff uh, you'll need a pencil and you'll need some um, these, these are Chanel sticks or pipe cleaners or in this case fuzzy sticks some scissors and I got a big bag of polyester fiber fill that I use for all of my stuff. I know some people prefer one, you know, brand to another, but I literally don't, eh, I'm not really picky. So I'm just, I just grab the crafter's choice. And I think I got a bag. It's really cheap. I think I got it at a Walmart for like six bucks. So it's pretty much all you'll need for this project. And I'm going to take out the thread here cut this open real quick and show you what goes inside. Sometimes I like to keep the bags um, to discard all of my extra felt pieces that are too small to use. So I've been I've been uh, getting a little collection of strips of felt that I want to make like something out of eventually <laughs> one of these days. Oh also you'll need a ring. Uh, I like to use my uh, this ring I got I think you can get it at Walmart and um, you can also get it on Amazon. I've had, I've got it on both places, so whichever you prefer. And um, it comes with a picture chart and all the keys in the, in the back of it. And it tells you how many strands to use, types of stitches, and um, the key the key codes for the. It, they correlate with the chart that it comes with. So here are the needles, beading needle and applique needle. Here are the pearls and the beads and the white sequins. I am loving this kit already. There's nothing to it. It's so easy. Oh, and there's silver metallic thread. This is the first time I've actually used silver. I usually use gold, but so we're just going to sort these colors and then I'll get right back to you. Okay, so I pre-cut the backing. And I'm going to use this backing as like a template for the lining. So I have extra felt that I use to line all my stockings with. Okay, so now we cut out the front and we're going to work on that. But um, I just want to show you real quick um, how my process for cutting out lining. So I'm just going to cut this out. Perfect. And I'm just going to set this aside for now. So that'll be easier to just grab and go once I'm done putting the stocking together. Okay, so we're gonna refer to our instructions often because I have never done this stocking before. It's It looks rather simple, the construction is rather simple. So if you have a hard time, then always refer back to your instructions and your colored chart as well as the picture that they give you. So I'm just gonna look here. And we're going to start with step one. And I'm just looking at the type of stitch we're going to do here. 
There are my children. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna use the silver metallic thread. And when it, when it comes to the metallic thread, I really like to be um, conservative and use only a small amount so that it doesn't get knotted up because the metallic thread tends to get knotted up rather quickly. So use uh, the smallest amount you feel comfortable with. And um, I am doing the outline stitch here. And it's exactly the same as you would using embroidery thread. We are using one strand and I just knot the end and then um, the other end's kind of loose. So I'm just following along this line here. And I'm going to do this for all of these little swirly things. And um, for metallic thread in particular, I like to take my time and really place all my stitches because you can maneuver these a little bit easier than with the embroidery thread. You know, once embroidery thread's placed on there, it's really hard to move it. But because the metallic thread's got like this rigidness to it, you can actually maneuver it um, rather simply. So even if you say you're working with metallic thread and you're going along a stamp, which is what I'm doing here, and you still see the stamp underneath, that's okay. Um, especially working with one to two strands. I just tend to notice that with this type of stocking, seeing the stamp, it doesn't really like bother me. It actually gives it kind of a, a homemade antique look, which is kind of what we want for this type of stocking. I don't know. So it really depends on your preference. But um, honestly, the stamps on this particular kit don't really bother me. But if they bother you, you can um, rub them off with the tip of your needle. But as you can see, the way that I'm doing it, I'm literally using my thumb and pushing each um, stitch into place. And then um, I'm trying to use the um, same exact um, uh, tightness for each stitch. So you don't want one stitch to be tighter than the other because then it'll pull at the felt and it'll pull as a stamp and it'll warp it a little bit. So try and keep your tension fairly similar throughout your project. And this takes time. You know, it takes time and experience. And I remember using all kinds of tension for my first like several kits <laughs> so yeah my stitches were all over the place and my outline stitches were always uneven and all my like back stitches were always uneven <laughs> but again it takes a lot of time to get the tension that you want and to be very consistent so this is what I'm showing you here. So I'm just finishing this little section here. And then I'm gonna skip ahead and show you what it looks like completely finished because as you can see, this takes a while. <laughs> and metallic thread usually does take a while. So I treat it like it is like embroidery. So I just double knot it in the back. And now I'm just gonna do the rest of these little bits all across the top here. Okay, oh my gosh, it's, it's a little hard to see in the camera because the silver is so blended in, but I think it'll pop more once I put more elements onto the stocking. So right now it's a little harder to see because it's basically silver on white. So now we're going to do these little leafy things and we are still working with the metallic thread, um, but we're not doing an outline stitch here. We're going to be doing kind of like a straight stitch. Sorry, I'm, I'm not in the camera. I'm trying to position it. There we go. These edge pieces, I like to take my time because sometimes the edge will fray. But this felt seems rather sturdy, so it shouldn't be a problem. So I'm just kind of going off of each, like, little tiny section. You know how the leaves have their little tiny sections? So I'm kind of using that as a guide for my straight stitches. Honestly, you can do it however you feel. But, yeah. I'm just trying to go really slow here. And I'm trying to push it with my thumb to make sure it's in line. 
because sometimes with one strands it's hard to get them all lined up especially if you're not doing just one huge stitch hopefully you can see what I mean so for the outer edges I go from the outside in and not inside out because I noticed that when we when you are on the edge of the felt and you go inside out you tend like I tend to um, pull the fibers in a little too much so I like to control my tension by um, going out out to inside so from the edge to the inside and there's a whole bunch of these little tiny leaves all across the top so we're gonna do this for all the leaves and we're still using one strand I think this gold really pops and it's gonna look really 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 cool against the silver I said metallic earlier I meant gold <laughs> okay you see the difference oh my gosh I'm loving this already just like just like the metallic colors coming out I love it okay now we're gonna do some beads and it just calls for clear beads. So I'm just gonna start at a random spot and I'm gonna use the white thread that it comes with. Because honestly, it doesn't come with clear thread. You can buy clear thread. I just choose not to. <laughs> One less step for me to worry about. So I just use white and it's fine because the white will blend into the back, so. But if you feel like using the invisible thread or clear thread, be my guest. I know plenty of people that do. And these are like little, I don't know if they're berries or something. I think they might be berries. Like kind of a mimic of a berry or something. But when it's all together, it really looks really elegant. So when you're just adding a bead, we're literally going up through the bead and then down um, out of the bead. So don't go up through the bead and down through the bead, otherwise the bead will just pop off. So we're going to do that throughout the top. I'm really loving the quilted, like you can even see on the chart, it has kind of a quilted feature on it. And there's also, I believe Santa's like robe is quilted. If I, if I, if the picture looks like it, it looks like it's quilted on the picture. I'm guessing it's quilted. Okay. All these beads look so cute. Okay. So we got the beads done and they're on the top and the bottom. Don't forget the bottom ones. And if you have a hard time looking, make sure you refer to the pictures. And now we're going to add the, um, the stitching. So I like to add the stitching first. And then um, I'm just looking at what these are. So I think these are just beads right here. And no sequins. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So I went ahead and the little dotted lines are a running stitch. And those are one strand of the metallic silver. And then every other one, so the ones that are connected with the dots have sequins and beads on them. And the ones in the middle just are pearls. If you didn't see what I mean. So this actually took me quite a while to finish because of all the detail. But I really love this. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I started some of these flowers, same concept. These are all outline stitched with one strand of the silver metallic thread. And I'm just gonna grab my needle here and just show you how to put this on. It seems self-explanatory, but I know people have asked about especially about metallic thread. I have, I have, there's several things you could do. Um, I like to work with smaller pieces and I sometimes um, I'll knot it once or sometimes I'll knot it twice. 
sometimes I won't knot it at all. So it really depends on my mood. <laughs> you can try all those types and see which one works best for you. Notice how when you pull on it, see how it frays so quick? This is why I like to tie it. So it doesn't fray. And this is why I use little bits at a time. And, you know, I'll cut off the fray just so it stops fraying. But that's how I knot it. And sometimes, depending on how much I'm using, I won't even bother knotting it. I'll just kind of use it. And then I will double, triple, sometimes quadruple knot the bottom because um, I like to make sure that it's really secure. So that's what I'm showing you right now. And you can always test your knots by going through the felt and seeing if it'll if it'll snag or not. And I've had I've had it go right through the felt. <laughs> so I'm like, shoot, I gotta put in a couple more knots <laughs> so it doesn't go right through. So these are like, I think these are like a poinsettia. Like a poinsettia kind of flower. That's what it looks like. So these little sections right here are just a simple outline stitch. And notice how my knot did not go through the felt, so we're good. <laughs> yes, so when you're knotting, um, when you're knotting the metallic thread onto your needle, you will have a little bit of a hard time getting it through. So make sure you kind of wiggle it so you're not yanking any felt or anything. Take your time with the metallic thread, especially if this is your first time working with metallic thread. It's definitely um, a process and it takes a while to get the hang of. And there's a whole bunch of it in this kit. So you kind of develop um, like s systems of your own. It seems like the, I don't know if it's just me, it just seems like the metallic, like the silver the silver metallic thread is just a little bit easier than the gold. Maybe it's just me. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. Um, I'm not a big fan of working with metallic thread because it just it just falls apart. But this this metallic thread seems to be holding up pretty well. Okay, so we're gonna do that for the rest of the flowers. And then I'm going to cut out the flowers, and there's a little section that goes on top of this flower. So there's the bottom of the flower, which is kind of a cream color. And then I think it has like a white accent petals, I think. Okay, so I'm showing you how I double knot my metallic thread in the back. So I wrap it around my needle three times, and then I, um, I pull it through, and that creates a really nice knot back here. See that? Okay, so that's, this is what I do to, um, to knot my thread after, after I'm done. So I'm actually gonna, I did it kind of backwards actually. <laughs> Normally I double knot it and then I knot it again and then I trim it. So I kind of did it backwards there. Oops, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> Okay, so let me try again. Okay, so now that I double knotted it, now I do three times or four times, depending on what you want. And then I pull it all the way through to knot the end before I even cut it. That way it's a lot easier and quicker to knot the end of your metallic thread. And I just kind of made this up. So I double knot it normal in the back. And then I do this kind of trick to, and now it's ready to go. And now I don't have to sit there and you know make a bunch of knots over and over again so i'm just going to finish this and um let me show you okay so this is what i actually do in the back so i just do a regular double knot <laughs> oh, okay so here's a double knot this is the exact same thing that i do with the regular thread and i do hide my tails And then, before I cut it, I double knot it. So now I'm just gonna double knot it again. I guess this is technically a triple knot. And this just saves so much time. Okay. 
and then I trim it, and then you're ready to go. Bam. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can just trim it, and then you don't have to do anything. Yeah, I just kind of... I figure this is the fastest way to like go from one little section to another. Okay, so here are the little white points that go along the point steady. Yeah, so I'm gonna put those on and then we'll move on to the next point. Okay, so I'm showing you how to put the white parts on and they alternate. So it looks like white cream, white cream. And I'm just going to applique the bottoms. Um, and then that, that way I can leave the tips out. And it gives it a bit of a dimension. I'm trying to hide the knot here. And I'm just going to applique the bottom part of the petal. And we do this for every little poinsettia flower. And there's several on this stocking, so it's a lot of work putting all these together. But I think it's gonna turn out super cute. I really love the um, contrast between the cream and the white. I'm just following along the dotted line using an applique stitch. Another name for an applique stitch is the whip stitch. Okay, I'm going to double knot it back here. Um, I do like to add a couple of stitches back in the back just to secure it a little bit. You don't have to do this, but I like to do it because it's, you know, I like to be thorough. I really want to make sure that each petal is secure, so. Okay, doing my double knot, and then I'm going to hide my tail back here. And there we go. Snip. And there is the finished poinsettia flower. And we're going to stick these up on top, and there's four that go on the top, and there's a few that go on the bottom. And we're going to secure it in the middle. So I'm just going to stick a pin right here so it doesn't move around. And I'm going to grab my uh, string, and we're going to come up from the bottom. And we're going to secure these with the pearls that come in your kit. And that's it. So you don't have to do any more stitching. It just secures in the middle. Unless you feel like it needs some stitches, then go ahead and add some stitches, but... Once you add all these pearls in the middle, you won't feel like you need to add any more stitches to secure the flowers. I like to take my thumb and maneuver the pearls so that they stay in a circle. I like to do the outer circle first and then to go in the middle and do the middle. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you've made this kit before, leave a comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this kit. And uh, the middle one is a little different. So we've got uh, a bead and sequin that goes right in the middle. And we're going to do this for every single poinsettia flower. So stay tuned. There are uh, a couple more tutorials after this one so we can finish this beautiful stocking. And I'm so excited to do this stocking. Even though the colors are kind of, there's only, it's so simple and yet it's so beautiful. So I'm excited to see the results at the end. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button for me so that you don't miss any new uploads. And uh, as I finish up this flower, I hope to see you guys in my next tutorial. 
Thank you for watching. I'm going to do the rest of them later. There's some down here. Okay. See you next time. Bye.